in the house. He was the opening day starter for the Blue Jays the last two seasons, and he makes a happy fan here as he gives a youngster a baseball on his way back to the dugout after completing his pregame warm-ups. And Ricky Romero is anxious. You can bet he's anxious, fellas. What's it like to make your season debut in a start? Well, I think it's always uh, kind of a anxious moment. I think. Most of us get uh, excited about it, but yet uh, the waiting around before the game is probably the hardest part because you want to do what he's doing right now, get out to the mound and get it started. Yeah, I was fortunate. I came in in relief, so I was already at the ballpark. I didn't get that opening day start thing at the big league level, but, yeah, you want to get out there on that mound, and let's just get this over with and get it going. Well, Ricky Romero ironed out some mechanical issues down in spring training, and it's all about alignment. It's all about driving toward home plate, and... You can see how he is finding his landing spot. He will mark that and then try to hit that spot throughout the course of his delivery. Jack, what kind of reminder is this for Ricky, and what's the purpose of this line? Well, I think that's what uh, one of the coaches in the minor leagues has probably been working on. I mean, to try to step in towards the plate and not so much cross body because those are the mechanics that, that uh, got him in trouble. It's also about keeping his front shoulder in. Romero will go up against the Seattle Mariners, who had a good homestand. They went five and two on the homestand against the Angels and the Orioles, and they start to swing the match well. So let's take a look at the lineup. Top of the order, Michael Saunders, the Canadian, is leading things off, and he's a terrific player coming into his own. Kyle Seeger is the third baseman against Toronto. He's hit 400 for his young career, 18 for 45 with a homer and five RBIs. And then Michael Morris, who was with the Mariners early in his career, returns with a red-hot bat. He is tied for the American League lead with nine home runs. And Morris is back in Seattle, and that lineup is set to take on Ricky Romero. And, Ricky, there's his numbers that you see from last year. Ricky's uh, been struggling you know, since June of last year, quite honestly. But it all starts over here tonight, and it's all about his command and whether his mechanics will allow him to get through the ball and uh, throw strikes, and uh, we'll see what we what we have going here. Well, we've got two pitchers up here in the booth tonight. We'll keep a close eye on Ricky, see if we can detect any changes. More than anything, the hitters will tell you all you need to know about mechanics and velocity and movement, everything else. And Romero, you can bet he's got some butterflies churning in that gut right now. So we'll start things off. Michael Saunders from BC is back. He was out with a shoulder problem, and he has been in instrumental part of this team's resurgence with the bat since his return. Saunders from Victoria BC is 26 years old. Here's the first pitch of the game. This is down and in. Saunders hit 19 home runs a year ago. He also had 21 steals. That we can't break Ricky Romero down pitch by pitch. We're just watching him get into the flow of this game again. Well, and it'll be interesting to see how patient the, the Seattle Mariner hitters are. You know, they, they should go up there taking a few pitches. Just a reminder the third voice you'll hear in the booth tonight is Dwayne Ward, who's kind enough to join us in the booth. And, Dwayne, this is all about confidence and Swagger back on the mound. It, it is about confidence here, and I think you know, Ricky. You know, I mean, we've seen him take a lot of deep breaths out there. You know, the adrenaline, the butterflies have got to be just churning on him right now. I, mean, I, was, I was talking to Jack earlier about it. So, you know, hopefully, you know, he does not have an adrenaline dump to where, you know, the excitement the, and and uh, the anticipation of starting here gets away from him. Bouncing there ball. Historis. It's the first time in the ball game. Saunders is out on the four three ground out. We mentioned about Romero's getting his alignment set. Then, what is this all about in the bullpen before the game? Well, he's actually taking footsteps because he wants his stride to be consistent. Also, and one of the problems he had before was overstriding, and that locks up his leg and prevents his upper body from getting through the ball. So, those are all things that they've been working on him with in in the, down in Dunedin, and he's just trying to remind himself of those things when he warms up. Kyle Seeger takes the first pitch outside. Seeger really came onto the scene last year. He had a heck of a year for Seattle. He was a terrific road warrior. Drove in 85 runs, but 60 of them came on the road. He was a guy that 
really did a good job for Eric Wedge and kind of blossomed right before their eyes. He's been a hot hitter. 361 over his last 19 games. Ramirez ahead one and two. Off the plate outside. Good velocity. Yeah, I mean, that's something I'm, I'm really paying attention to right now. I just looking at his velocity. You know, I don't think Ricky had a problem with his velocity last year or anything like that. I think it's just more the mechanical side of things of getting and throwing the ball around the plate. There's that good changeup. That's always been one of his best weapons, and he bounces it on the plate. And that little nod looked as if he said, okay, that's the changeup I want, because that was exactly where he wanted it on that pitch. That's exactly where you want the changeup, especially in that count, you know, 2 2 count. There's a base hit into center field for Kyle Seeger. He continues to wear out the Blue Jays. We mentioned he was a 400 hitter in his young career against Toronto. Right there is 3 2 count. He's got to throw a strike, and that's better than giving a guy a walk, in my opinion. At least he came after him, kept the ball down. Seeger hit a pretty good pitch. Oftentimes, a hit a line drive at somebody, and you get an out. Kendris Morales in his first season with the Mariners, a switch hitter batting a right handed against Ricky Romero. Morales is 30 years old. He turned 30 on June 20th. He was acquired from the Angels in a trade for Jason Vargas last de December. Ground ball should go. be two. Kawasaki, Istuas, and Canacion. Ricky Romero has a big league inning under his belt. Romero. He looks in his rightful spot on the Blue Jays bench, and John Gibbons goes down and offers a fist pump and said, That a boy, Rick. We haven't seen many three up, three down innings in the first for the Blue Jays this year. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays starting lineup. Rick Laurie had a lead off home run in last night's game. It's Laurie, Melky, Cabrera, Bautista. Down in the order, J.P. Aaron Sebia. He's hit very well at Rogers Center this season. For Aaron Sebia, seven of his eight home runs have come right here at home. How about Colby Rasmus? I thought last night he had one of the best games we've seen from him all season. He's leading the Blue Jays, batting with runners in scoring position. A 316 average, and they're all set to take on King Felix. And he's one of the game's best right now. He has totally dominated in his last three starts. He's 2 0 with a 0.82 ERA, 28 strikeouts, and only two walks. So He's going to be tough. Blue Jays have had their way with Felix over his career. He's made nine career starts against Toronto. He's three and four with a 5.13 ERA. He gets ahead with that fastball. Brett Laurie hit his third career leadoff home run last night. 
against a fellow Canadian, Ryan Dempster. Check swing on the breaking ball. For Hernandez, former Cy Young winner, he won the Cy Young in 2010. He also authored a perfect game last August 15th. He didn't get the call. He thought that was strike three. And a couple of stutter steps after the pitch. Dwayne, what impresses you about Felix Hernandez? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm watching him here pitching, and I tell you what, I like his pace. I like, you know, the way he just gets the ball and goes. And it's almost like he already knows exactly what he wants to throw before he gets that ball back from the catcher. I mean, I, I, I love it. I love the way he's uh, he's going about uh, working these guys. Two and two to Laurie. Breaking yeah. ball, hammered the third. Seeger is there. Laurie's retired, one down. Let's take a look at the defense behind Felix Hernandez in the outfield. Jason Bay, Michael Saunders, and Michael Morris left to right. Kyle Seager's the third baseman. Brendan Ryan is a wizard with the glove at shortstop. Justin Ackley second, Justin Smoke at first, and Jesus Montero's behind the plate. And there's the shortstop, Brendan Ryan. The reason he's in the game at all is not hitting. It's because of his glove and his defense. He is one of the best in the game, and sometimes defense can win you ball games. Melky Cabrera back up in the two spot in the lineup tonight. Last night it was Adam Lynn batting second. That's pulled downstairs. But when you look at Cabrera, and we all know he's had two very good years with the bat, I think John Gibbons just trying to find a place in the lineup where it might get him going a little bit. He's back up in front of Bautista. This is popped along the right side. That's going to reach the seats. In general, Buck, I think the reason that he struggled is he's had a tough time laying off the pitch up in the zone. And it's so tempting. I think if I was a hitter, that's the one that I'd have a tough time laying off. The one down is a long way away from my eyeballs. <laughs> and it's going to be harder for me to get to. But the one that's right in my eyes, I see well. But it's by me so quick. Sharp play hit to Justin Smoke, the first baseman. Two ground ball out, start the game for Hernandez. So Jose Bautista will step in the box with two outs. Bautista just three for 12 against Felix Hernandez. But one of those three hits was a monumental home run back in 2010. He had his 50th home run of the season in the first inning against Hernandez. It would end up a one nothing ball game. Goes after the first pitch. Boy, don't you love yeah. first pitch down the middle? That just couldn't cut the plate in half any better than it did right there. And, you know, but that's the way Hernandez pitches. He just comes right after you, gets ahead and ahead and, uh, ahead and account, and then tries to put you away with this changeup or that breaking ball. And, I mean, it's just the way he, he goes about it. There's again. So many pitchers get caught in the trap of trying to be perfect. He can't be. And that's the whole point. That's why Felix Hernandez is special. Because he's not too worried about perfection. He's saying, here it is. You hit it. I'm going to get you out when I get two strikes. There's the little change up. And it's a hard pitch. He'll change up on that fastball, throw it with a little sink on it. But the one thing it doesn't have, Bucks, it doesn't have a, a great big uh, mile per hour gap. It looks a lot like that fastball. It's about probably four or five mile an hour shorter than, uh, slower than his fastball. So it does look like it's a fastball. And I think that's what a lot of these hitters can't do is they can't lay off that. One and two to Bautista. Another ground ball. Seager at third for a second time. Hernandez has a three up, three down inning. We've played an inning at Rogers Center. Ricky Romero has a good inning under his belt. He'll be anxious to get back out on the mound.
He has changed some of his mechanics. We're going to look at a change right here. Dwayne, break this down for us. Well, what I'm seeing here, you know, is on the left here, you're going to see last season where he's going up over his head. This is a timing situation. On the right, tonight here he is pitching, gloves down by his waist. And if you go a little bit further into it, you can see that now he comes up here. He's pretty much almost in the same position right here without going up over his head. You are seeing that he's tapping that ball a little bit bigger on the right-hand side tonight. And you can see that he is just a little bit better going toward home as opposed to going toward the first base with that, that lead leg. So I think it's more going to be what, like Jack was talking about, the mechanical side of it is getting that, you know, the timing back to where you can get everything going in one direction. That's home plate. Buck, we talked about, uh, excuse me, uh, Mariano Rivera and a guy that's so excellent at repeating his delivery. That's what they're trying to get out of Ricky is by shortening up that stride and everything. They're trying to get him to repeat his delivery. Michael Morris goes after the first pitch. He was well out of the strike zone, and Romero was ahead. Morris has had a big start to his return to the Mariners. Nine home runs. We mentioned he is tied atop the American League with Chris Davis and Edwin Encarnacion. The entire essence of spinning off the delivery. What's that do to your arm angle? Well, you know, I used to spin. But, I mean, the biggest thing you got to do is get rid of the ball before you spin. So that way you have no more control over what's going to happen. I think what happens with Ricky is he gets into a situation where he's spinning before he's letting that ball go. And I think if they can get this to where he can line it up a little bit better, get out there toward home play a little bit better, let go of the ball. If you happen to spin a little bit, that's fine. But get rid of the ball first. One and two to Morris. Cut out and missed. Morris strikes out. One down. Friends, it's time for our BlackBerry sneak peek stat of the game. Brought to you by the new BlackBerry Z10. Built to keep you moving. And we're going to look at his ERA 2011 there. 292 ERA. During the second half of 2012, it blossomed up to 5.77. So it's a mechanical issue that can affect you as a pitcher. And once you get out of whack, your mind takes over. <laughs> well, and, and you can get a sore arm too from it, <laughs> which caused him some problems. Yeah, sure did. And good start for him. Canadian Jason Bay with a 1 1 count. Is it good change up in there for a strike? It's one and two. Good downward angle right there on that change up. Got his arm up and came downhill. Overcooked the curveball. <laughs> that was it. really good. <laughs> <laughs> it broke. He tried to make he tried to make that one a real hard one. <laughs> two two pitch. Bay strikes out in a good spot. Back to back strikeouts for Romero. One thing I know that they're working with Ricky early in the game is to kind of center the glove right over the heart of the plate and let the movement take its course. And as the game goes on, Ricky's going to be able to fine tune that a little bit better. But early in the game, just like Felix Hernandez, throw it down the middle, let it take its course and then you can start fine tuning as a, you feel your way through the mound as the game goes on. Dustin Smoke goes after the first pitch and it's a lazy fly ball in the center. Ricky Romero sets down the Mariners on just 10 pitches in the second.
Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. A couple of good pitchers off to a good start tonight. Ricky Romero has gone through two innings. Three up, three down. Another first pitch strike from Hernandez. It's it's like a machine out there. He just keeps going just right at you. Here it is. Hit it if you can. And then once he gets in that, you know, that power position, that's when he tries to put you away with something else. And kind of see Owen at the plate. Edward hit a home run against Felix Hernandez last September. On a pretty good pitch. Looked like it was a changeup, and he drove it out of the yard, but he was on fire in September. Edwin is three for 12 in his career against Hernandez. Well, Jack, I think you and I have talked a lot about it, not necessarily in specifics, but Hernandez is using kind of an old fashioned approach. Start in the middle and work to the edges. No doubt what he's doing so well is he's not reading the names on the back of the jerseys when they come up to the plate. He could care less. He's got a game plan. And that is get ahead. And once I'm ahead, I can I can throw my doo-doo. I can throw the stuff that get gets people out. Fastballs are are to get me there with two strikes, and the rest of the stuff is for having to have some fun. Made a great pitch and didn't get the call. It's two and two. There's the change of bounce in the dirt. Full count. And here's why he's so good is when he gets to three two, two walks, 28 strikeouts in his last two starts. He's going to come right back with that fastball, and he's probably going to paint. He painted that outside corner and gets the pop up. First baseman gives way to Ackley, the second baseman, and you were right on. He painted the outside corner with that fastball and got the pop up. But that's having confidence in your pitches and, and, and knowing that you can throw those pitches. And still get somebody out no matter what the count is. And look at the pattern of pitches he used against Encarnacion. He was all over the place. The yeah. two that hit the plate were off speed pitches, change ups. And overthrew, then, he overthrew them. And then he didn't leave one pitch in the middle of the plate. No. That's how you win Cy Young's. <laughs> Aaron Sevia goes after the first pitch. JP. We mentioned his average here at home 270 with seven of his eight home runs hit right here in this ballpark. Excuse me, 290 is the average. There's a pattern of pitchers in the first couple innings, and the difference that they become a different pitcher after second, third inning. Justin Verlander, one of those guys that can throw 100 late in the game. People wonder why. Well, it's all about timing and rhythm. This guy, you can see the excitement building with him, inning by inning, because of his confidence in throwing the ball where he wants to. He's ahead of Aaron Sevia, 0 and 2. As crazy as it sounds, I've already seen it in Ricky Romero's face after going out there and getting through two innings. Six up, six down. He has a different look about him on the bench than he did before the start of the game. No doubt. The he, doubt is removed. He's yeah. like, okay, I'm, I'm back. I'm okay. He looks a lot more attentive on the bench. One and two, one out. Bouncing ball to Seeger. Across the diamond, Smoke digs out the low throw, and they thought they were three out, so everybody was running toward the dugout from the <laughs> infield. So wait a minute. Adam Lynn's another guy in this Blue Jays lineup that has taken King Felix deep, and that was center cut right there. Well, if there's a pattern at all, it's the fact that Felix is throwing fastballs pretty much over the middle of the plate early in the count. So the Paul Molitors of the world will be jumping all over that. Yeah. Ricky Henderson's. Those guys would spot that and they wouldn't be waiting around to get to that nasty stuff. They'd just be hitting that fastball. And it's not a secret. No. He, no. And Felix doesn't care if you know. He just has the confidence he got just enough movement on it to keep it off the barrel of the bat. It goes back to saying that same thing Jack said in the first inning. Here it is. Hit it if you can. 
Picked something off that pitch and missed away. Looked like a breaking ball. Adam Lynn, 220 on the season. The last 10 games. Look at the walks. 12 walks and a 333 batting average. It's this ball on the ground. Infielders are busy so far in this ball game. Felix Hernandez has five ground ball outs and two innings of work. We're scoreless after two. Romero and Hernandez hooked up. Ricky Romero back where he belongs on the mound at Rogers Center. There was a first pitch strike from Dustin Ackley. Ackley had a big rookie season two years ago. It's this ball on the ground. Asturias to his left. Romero continues to get ground ball outs. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. It's a good way to start if you're Oakland. AJ Griffin on the mound for the A's as they open up against CC Sabathia and the Yankees. Well, how about the Yankees? They got another tough injury with Jabba Chamberlain going on the DL. And they have had their mayor, fair share of injuries. Nope. Jesus Montero, Kawasaki near the bag at second, and Romero, just like he did in his start in the minors, getting a lot of sink on that fastball. What he's doing so well is throwing strikes early in the count. He's getting ahead. He's throwing the ball just like Felix Hernandez. Strike one. Fastball's down in the zone. Then he goes to the breaking ball. So far, so good. Brendan Ryan, the shortstop, number nine hitter. Well, Jeff here and CB is doing a good job of sitting in the middle of the plate, not trying to get Ricky Romero to be too fine, and so far so good. No, he's he's really you know not a lot of movement back there. I think you know he's adjusting on uh, on a couple of pitches, but not on a lot of them. Uh, but everything's pretty much you know hey let's just aim for center, let's let movement take over and uh, end up you know either down low on, on on the inside or down low on the outside. Romero has thrown seven of nine first pitch strikes. Up and away. Opened up a little there and overthrew that one. He's going to have a few of those. That's just old habits. Old habits plus the fact that you know he hasn't thrown a lot yet. To have the kind of command that he's had so far. We're in the third inning with two outs. It's been pretty impressive. 
Well, I like what he did there. He spun off on that last pitch, Jack, and then he came right back, right down the middle of the plate for a strike. Uh, that, that, that's confidence. Two and two, two down. Another off speed pitch, another foul. Brendan Ryan's one of the wizards at shortstop with the glove, but he has had his problems at the plate. I mentioned Ryan hitting 149 for the season. He's 10 for 67. Good changeup. Another 10 pitch inning for Ricky Romero, and that is huge. He's throwing strikes and changing speeds. He's faced the Mariners three innings and faced nine hitters. Three strikeouts for Romero. And his teammates, Jose Bautista, on the bench enjoying the drink here. And watch Bautista. Romero's talking to Pete Walker. Bautista said, Hey, way to go, Rick. Way to go, Rick. Hey, Rick, it's Jose. Remember me? Oh, yeah. Hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ricky Romero, a big part of this team, and it was tough for him to be away from the ball club. And you got to give him credit. He went down and did his work. And he continues to work. And that's uh, that's going to that's, that's the work in progress, Buck. Is that he's got to continue to work and build off of what's happened so far in these three innings. Kobe Erasmus had a three-hit night last night, and I thought it might have been the best game of the year for him. I agree, 100%. He had a couple grind-out bad bats. He had a big single off Andrew Miller yeah. in the seventh yep. after getting buzzed <laughs> right at the chin. He came right back, kept his shoulder in, and pulled a single to right. And then had a leadoff single against Joel Hanrahan right. in the ninth. Ball gets away from Montero. Well, maybe, just maybe, Ricky Romero, three scoreless innings. The team starts understanding hey, let's get him a run or two. Let's see what he can do with a run or two. And that's where it all can start. Wow. Inside corner and Rasmus strikes out. Hernandez gave him a little bit of everything in that at bat from a curve ball couple change ups and finishes it off with the fastball. Well this one ran right back over the inside corner. He starts it kind of at his body. And a lot of left handed hitters will freeze on that one. That's a tough pitch. He's got so many other weapons that you're concerned with it's tough to pull the trigger. Meister Asturias takes one off the plate but gets the call. That ball ran off the plate, but Jim Joyce calls it a strike. He liked it all the way in there. Change up. It's a pretty good way to pitch. Fastball change up. And if they don't do anything, just keep moving it around. Yeah, then that's the thing. You know, it's just that, that confidence level that Hernandez has here. I mean, he's out there just getting ahead of the hitters, like Jack said. Now, once I get ahead of you, now I can play with you and get you out. And I mean, 
both sides are doing that right now. Ricky and, and Felix are both doing that. And I mean, that's why the game's moving the way it is. Defensive swing, as Jack mentioned last night, that's referred to as the emergency act. Emergency act. <laughs> well, to fight off that nasty pitch on the outside corner that you know is going to be called a strike, and you just can't do anything else with it. As Terrace saw the first pitch of this at bat called a strike, it looked like it might have been outside. There's that swing back fastball, and that is a doozy. Two strikeouts for Hernandez here in the third. Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Romero and Wari. Presented here at Rogers Center, and Ricky is back hooked up in a big pitcher's duel with King Felix, Felix Hernandez. Munonori Kawasaki reunited with his former teammates during batting practice. He played with the Mariners last year and appeared in 61 games for Seattle. So he knows all about what he's dealing with now against Hernandez. He's watched him. The, ball the, strike. the difference in the two pitchers, you see, Felix has got a lot of lot more body movement, but ultimately he comes to a set position, pretty much at the same place, and it allows him a little more deception. There's a little more movement, so he has a little more deception. But don't be fooled by any of that because he has the same repetitive delivery. Yeah, I mean, Pedro Martinez, Louis Tian, guys right. with a lot of movement, they could repeat that same delivery. And if it reminds you a little bit of Henderson Alvarez a year ago, Alvarez copied Hernandez. They both grew up in the same town in Venezuela. And the frightening thing about all this is Hernandez is just 27 years old. I mean, he is. Well established. There's a bouncing ball off the glove of Hernandez, and Kawasaki is going to get the first hit against Hernandez. Munonori Kawasaki, first Blue Jay to reach against Hernandez. He continues to grind away. Munonori getting the first hit again tonight. He's done that before. Well, great concentration by Kawasaki. You can see his head stayed right down on that baseball, almost as if he watched the ball hit the bat. Hernandez couldn't locate it after he got a glove on it. He's yeah, mad because there goes the no hitter. Exactly, there goes the no hitter. But I think you know he tried that pitch two pitches before, and Kawasaki laid off it. And this one here caught a little bit too much of the plate where he can get the bat on it. Top of the order. That Lori goes after the first pitch. That's a special kind of guy, though. That's, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. He was thinking, no, no, right there, and he's upset because number one, he didn't make the pitch he wanted. Number two, he didn't catch the ball. It's another reason we yep. pitchers get upset. Two outs. Well, and you have talked about this before, how a pitcher will go to the mound and recognize early that he's on. Mm -hmm. And it looked like Hernandez had that feeling in this game. I think he's at an age where every time he goes out there, he feels great. That'll change as his career goes by. But if he's as smart as we all think he's going to be, the results probably won't change much. Meanwhile, Brett Laurie is going to have to do what. Munonori Kawasaki did just grind away a good at bat here and see if he can move the runners over, keep the wheel moving. Upstairs. Two balls and a strike, two outs. Kawasaki at first, the first Blue Jay batter to reach. And singled off the pitcher's glove.
There goes Kawasaki. Steals it without a throw. Third stolen base of the season for Muninori. And he got himself into scoring position. So actually, I actually think that was a great job by Seattle's catcher right there. Not even worried about the guy stealing, saying, This is a pitch we need to have to go 2 2. And Hernandez takes care of Lori, not worried about the stolen base. The Blue Jays get a base runner, but leave him at second. We'll go to the fourth. It's a scoreless game. A 107 start and Sunday also an afternoon start. It begins at 107. For tickets, call the Blue Jays at 416 341 1234. You can always log on to BlueJays.com to order your Jays tickets or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. R.A. Dickey will go up against Hisashi Iwakuma tomorrow afternoon. And in the finale, it'll be Brandon Morrow against Joe Saunders. Morrow gets a chance to pitch against his former ball club. Michael Saunders. Grounded out to second his first time on. Huh? Ricky Romero's had two 10 pitch innings, the second and third. Last year during that miserable season, he averaged 17 pitches an inning. He's now thrown eight of 10 first pitch strikes, and we've talked about that being a key to any pitcher's success. Turns great hitters into not so great hitters just by pitch counts. Put it in reference last night, Jay Happ really struggled, probably the most that he struggled all year. And Blue Jays ended up walking 10 guys. He had 70 some pitches after two innings. Both Hernandez and Romero have thrown eight of 10 first pitch strikes tonight. And the results are as expected two hits in the whole ball game, and nobody's even thought about the scoring yet. That, is, that right there, just getting ahead of the hitters is a quick recipe for success. And in Ricky's case, I think it's going to really help him build on that confidence. Once you get ahead, now you can play with him a little bit. Three and two, ground ball, pull the foul. That silky smooth voice that you've heard it might sound strange is Dwayne Ward, the great reliever for the Blue Jays, has joined Jack Morris and myself in the booth tonight. And I got to tell you, Ward, you're kind of relaxed at this, huh? No big well, you know, the good thing is I got two very crafty veterans here helping me out. I, I would like to say something else, but uh, this reminds me of going back down to uh, my rookie season where you know, I had to learn from the veterans. And so, uh, no, you guys have uh, you guys have been great. And I tell you, I'm just I'm watching a baseball game and, and talking about it. Michael Saunders takes a lead off walk and fans a reminder. If you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts, email ask the experts at sportsnet.ca. And keep your eye out for a home hardware Ask the Expert segment later on in the game. So Romero walks Michael Saunders. That's the first walk he's allowed tonight. Kyle Seeger 
Had a base hit his first time up. High and deep to right. Bautista will watch this one sail into the seat. Seeger is hit a two run home run. The Mariners are out in front, two nothing. So the leadoff walk to Saunders, and then the first pitch to Kyle Seeger, and Seeger connects his fourth home run of the season. You're going to see where he's setting right there, outside corner, and the ball is up and in. That's missing by about two and a half feet right there, and that's enough to put a ball in the seats. He tried to throw the slider. But it just didn't snap through. But you also see these, these Seattle hitters on that first round through. They were all taking pitches, taking pitches. Now they're seeing that Ricky's actually throwing strikes. Now let's see if they change their approach the second time through here. And see if they're going to start swinging at that first pitch. And that's exactly what Seager did right there. I mean, just he saw a pitch and he could handle it. Henry's Morales, the DH, gets hit by a pitch. It hit him in the back foot, and he's aboard. So Romero continues to work out of the stretch here in the fourth. Oh, Morris takes the first pitch strike. Michael Morris struck out in his first at bat. Morris was acquired from the Washington Nationals this offseason. He started his career. With the Chicago White Sox. That one gets away from Marin Seabee. He hasn't located the ball yet. Morales moves into second on the wild pitch. Well, Ricky's just got to regroup a little bit here in the fourth inning. Have you seen anything different, Jack, in this inning, opposed to the first three when everything was so smooth? The only thing that I could guess that is that he might start beginning a little tired. The balls are not in the same location. He's overthrown a few of them. And typically when your legs get tired, you, you adjust accordingly with your upper body. And you might wonder how can you be tired after just 45 pitches, but this is his first start plus the adrenaline. The adrenaline of the major league level. It's it's different than you, you know you go to the minor leagues and there's nobody in the stadium and you're pitching against a ball guys and yeah you're trying to focus like it's a big league game but it's not a big league game. You just got to try to reflect back on the first three innings now. That's the only thing he can do is put that away. The home run it, it happened. The hit by pitch, it happened. Now he's got to work on Michael Morse at home plate. Missed with that pitch and Morris laid off. Of yeah, it. That, that really looked like might have crossed up JP there because it did not look like he was ready for that pitch at all. And, you know, could these guys, I mean, get on the same page here, guys. And two balls, two strikes. Morales at second. And the ball in the dirt, that's a changeup. And it's always been a pitch that has a lot of movement. And we have heard from veteran catchers, Jose Molina, John Buck, when they first got a chance to catch Ricky Romero, they called him the toughest pitcher they caught because of that movement. Yeah, he had tremendous movement. A changeup, though, in my opinion, again, Wardo, you can argue this if you want. There's only one location for a changeup, and that's down and away. Yep. Morris didn't like the car. You can see he got plenty of the play, and Michael Morris strikes out for a second time. That's the first out of the inning. Fourth strikeout for Romero. Well, back to your point, Jack. I think you're right on that because of the fact that if you do miss something, if it's away, it's not going to hurt you. If we you try to come in with something like that and you miss, it's going to go right back out over the middle of the plate. Something the guy can the guy can hammer and. I agree with the 100%. I think if you are going to throw that, that change up, there's got to be something that's going down in the way. You can fool their body, but a lot of the good hitters will keep their hands back and still be able to throw the head of the bat at the ball. When it's down and away, there's no power generated. Yeah, absolutely. Romero has fallen behind Jason Bay. And Ricky Romero faced the minimum through three innings. 
and then walked Michael Saunders to start the fourth and gave up a two run home run to Seeger. Then he hit Kendris Morales. What would you do, Dwayne? What did you want to see from your catcher when you were having trouble throwing a strike? Well, the biggest thing I wanted to see from him is basically saying, you know what? I want to, I'm going to give you the biggest target I can possibly give you. I don't want you to overthrow anything to me. Let's just work like you, we were talking about in the first two innings. Let's work from the middle of the, uh, the middle of the plate out as the game goes on, as you get a little bit more confidence in throwing that, you know, throwing strikes. I just think Ricky here a couple times, you know, just basically he's overthrowing a few pitches and and he's, and he's getting behind the hitters in this inning, as opposed to the first three innings. Three and one. Jason Bay at the plate. Morales at second. Lays off that pitch and he'll take his base. Second walk of the inning for Romero. I'm seeing Ricky on a few of these pitches. Looks like he's standing almost straight up when he's throwing them. And it could be what Jack was talking about earlier is that, you know, maybe a little bit of fatigue setting in here because, you know, the excitement, the adrenaline, you know, maybe wearing off a little bit here. But, uh, you know, I just mentioned that, it, you know, a couple of pitches that he's thrown up and away or up. Up down the middle of the plate, to guys. It looks like he's just standing straight up on him instead of getting out over that front leg uh, like he was in the first three innings. Switch hitting first baseman Justin Smoke. And again, Ricky falls behind. Smoke flying out to in the second inning. Walker, Walker. going to come on out. The trainer's coming out, so maybe something happened. He told the umpire, Jim Joyce, I'm okay. And then Mike Frosted, the assistant trainer, it might be a blister issue, huh? Could be, could be a fingernail, something. Sometimes a fingernail can cut a different finger when you release it. See him looking at his hand. That looks like it could possibly be a blister. He looked like that on the pads of his fingertips on that one there. But. Looks like he's okay. Now John Gibbons is just. Assessing the Mariners lineup just to see where he's at. In case they have to make some sort of adjustment here. But Romero. Proclaimed himself fit. He's behind Justin Smoke. 2 0. Mariners have scored two on a two run home run in the fourth. They missed badly with that one, and that finger looks like it's an issue. As soon as he let that ball go, he looked right at that yeah. finger. And he's looking, it looks like he's looking right on that pad of that middle finger on his left hand there. And, you know, and it, it could be something where slipping, you know, catching those seams and just, uh, you know, rubbing that skin the wrong way. That's the third walk of the inning, and this is right back after Romero finished his bullpen warm-ups, and it's the middle finger where a lot of pressure is exerted on that baseball because that's the last point of contact the pitcher yep. has with the baseball. With the fastball, and a lot of guys use that with their breaking ball. Um, it looked like he was actually possibly chewing some skin off of his finger there a little bit to... You know, it could just be raw right now. Could be a callus that's getting tender. So the bases are loaded. Dustin Ackley, the second baseman, hit a ground ball with the second baseman his first time up, and Romero would love to see another ground ball. Aaron Loop will be up and throwing now in the Blue Jay pen. Well, whatever he did, he made a couple of good adjustments. But this is Ricky's makeup, though. Ricky is that, you know, that fighter, that bulldog that, you know, he's not going to just give in. Two runs in, one out, bases loaded. I 
obviously without knowing the location of that problem you can't really determine what pitch might be affected more and less curveball and actually lays off see I'm thinking that's the pitch that's bothering him the most is that breaking ball because every time he throws it's almost like he you know it can feel it because you, you know almost exert a little bit you know you pull on that curveball just a little harder with that middle finger and that, that could be the one he's, and he's bounced about three or four of them here full count Hendricks Morales got hit by a pitch. He's at third base. Jason Bay walked, as did Justin Smoke. Three walks and a hit batter this inning. Base hit to right. Morales is in to score. Bautista gets the ball back in quickly. And the Mariners have taken a 3 0 lead. Ackley delivers with the bases loaded and something he's quite adept at doing. Last year he was 7 for 13 with the bases loaded and drove in 12 runs. He thrives in those situations. I don't know what it is about those left handers. They seem to, you know, to, to do that to you every now and again. Jesus Montero and Romero bounces another one. You can see him wringing that pitching hand. Suggesting it's starting to bite him. Well, and John Gibbons just can't let this game get too far out of whack either because of the guy on the hill against them. Montero cuts on a high fastball. He'd love to see Ricky work his way out of this and come out with a little bit of a positive feeling. He had three really well pitched innings, but. Having a real struggle here in the fourth. 33 pitches this inning after two consecutive 10 pitch innings. We can kind of see though where his location has risen just a little bit in that strike zone, and that's where you know pitchers tend to get in trouble is when that when that ball rises up into that strike zone a little bit. It, it you know it's just it's an easier pitch to hit for these hitters. The first three innings, Ricky kept the ball down well. Bay's at third, Smokes at second, and Ackley's at first. Right back to Romero. He's got a chance for a play at the plate. He gets it to Aaron Sevia. For the force out, that ball may have hit Romero on the pitching arm. He's had quite a busy inning, and Mike Frostad is out with the skipper once again, and I think that got Romero on the pitching arm. He was able to recover and get the force out at home plate, but you can see he's pointing to his left forearm. And now he's had a finger issue, and now he is dealing with getting hit by that hot shot back to the mound. You can see where Ricky, you know, was stuck up in that little situation with his back leg still kind of, you know, spin back through there, and he was almost in no man's land there to get his glove back to get a, you know, get a glove on it or even get out of the way of it. So he's going to throw a pitch or two to see how he feels. Quite a dramatic turnaround from the first three innings here in the fourth. It all started with the leadoff walk to Saunders. Kyle Seeger then had his second hit of the night, a two run homer to right. And then Romero hit Morales, struck out Morris, walked the next two batters, and then actually had an RBI single. So Romero says they try to finish this inning. Bases remain loaded. Bay was out on the force at the plate. That was a good shot of it right there. We're showing her just hitting just just above the wrist on his forearm. And it's 
So Brandon Ryan he struck out in the second in the third inning. He was the ninth man to face Ricky Romero through three innings. He is the ninth man to bat here in the fourth. Romero you worry about his first start of the season. What you worry about is the fact that he'll try to make adjustments now if he did anything to hurt that forearm. And you just hope that Brendan Ryan does something foolish and swings at a ball that maybe he shouldn't or tries to hit a home run where he shouldn't and gets a little pop up. Sometimes you have to prey on the aggression of the hitter and hope that they will do something that makes them less than a 300 hitter. Ball on the strike. He just did. Popped it up. His stores awaits on it and Romero will get through the fourth inning. But Seattle scores three runs, a two run a home run and an RBI single. They lead the Blue Jays three nothing. Fourth inning, and John Gibbons is talking to him. And Romero took a hot shot off the bat of Jesus Montero off his pitching arm. And those pats on the back would suggest that Gibbons has ended Romero's night. And we don't know the extent of the finger problem, but it certainly looked like it had an impact on his rough inning in the fourth. The Blue Jays have some work to do against Felix Hernandez. And he goes back to his old ways, just going strike one, strike one, strike one. Just off the play, a little looper. This is trouble, and this is a fair ball. Cabrera halfway around first. Now he retreats. As that ball was just hit into no man's land. Well, it's a good thing he pulled the parachute there because he did not do that the other night. Ball that was hit off the fence in right field, ricocheted right to the right fielder, and he was thinking about going to two, but he had to put on the brakes. Smart play right there. You're down by three. You lead off the inning with a base hit. You certainly don't want to get thrown out at second, especially where you are in the batting order. Bautista steps in with Cabrera at first. Jays are down by three. Another first pitch strike for Hernandez. Just good things happen when you go out there and go strike one, strike one, strike one. I've always said it's the best pitch in baseball. Bouncing ball. Seager at third. Double clutches to Ackley back to first double play. Hernandez is throwing so many strikes. The 
defense for the Mariners on their toes expecting the ball to be put into play and he's appreciative of his infield as they turn the five four three double play. And the balls are hit hard right at people and making the defense run the way they are certainly helps Fernandez but it's all about his demeanor and approach that keeps the infielder sharp keeps the outfielder sharp. Felix Hernandez fell off the mound in an awkward position looked like he might have caught his spikes or something but he missed badly on that first pitch yeah, caught a spike or he may have landed on the edge of where Ricky's landing. He's thrown 10 of 13 first pitch strikes in this game so far. Missed again. Let's see if he can make the quick adjustment. Right now, just overthrowing. Yeah, he's he's just he wants raring to back. He wants to show Edwin that he can't hit the gas. <laughs> And that's not a smart thing. No. Got to play the scoreboard. There's a strike. Gave up a bloop single, then got the double play, and now he falls behind in Carnacion, three and one. Oh, the bat went flying there. That skipped right up the top of the Blue Jays dugout, and everybody appears to be okay. So now it's a full count, and we can hear the boos as the fans are reacting to the bat being taken away from the fan. Carnacion is called out on a high strike. He didn't like the call, but Hernandez gets out of the fourth. We'll go to the fifth. It's 3 nothing Seattle. Now time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. His first big league start of the season goes four innings, three hits. He gave up three and runs. He walked three batters. All those walks came in the fourth inning. He had faced the minimum through three and had two ten pitch innings. Overall, Jack Morris, how would you evaluate Ricky Romero? Well, he gets an A plus for the first three and a D minus in the, the, the you know fourth inning. And then I think he just hit a wall and uh, apparently the whatever was going on with his finger might have affected his command. And then getting hit in the arm didn't help anything. And uh, you know the, the only plus I can say about that is Ricky toughed it out. He wanted to get through the inning. At least he finished that inning. And good for him. Hopefully next time out will be a building block. There are certainly some positives tonight. The first three innings were pretty sharp. Aaron Loop will take over in the fifth inning. 
Facing the top of the order. Michael Saunders started that fourth inning with a leadoff walk and then scored on Seeger's two run homer. So we mentioned Michael Saunders from Victoria, B.C. Luke makes a terrific pitch down and away. Aaron Loop asked to give the Blue Jays a little length here tonight. And he has pitched three innings. Picked up his first big league save in the three in effort in Kansas City. And Loop's thinking, okay, the last pitch was a strike in the same spot. What was wrong with that one? Well, it looks like Jim Joyce is really preferring the ball up in the zone a little bit more than the ball down in the zone. Would you keep a book on umpires? I think you keep a mental idea, but it goes game to game because umpires, just like all of us, we're human and it changes. It, it, they're, they're adjusting. Sometimes they'll give you something, next time they won't. Saunders fights it off down the left side. That's just barely foul. How about you, Dwayne? Do you ever. You know what? I never, I never really kept a book with the umpires. You know, you, you kind of got to know which umpires were going to be a little bit more liberal with the strike zones and which ones are going to try to make you keyhole a little bit. But I didn't have the luxury, like Jack, you know, to, to, to work with these umpires, you know, for six, seven, eight, nine innings. I only came in there for, you know, sometimes three, two, or one. So I would basically say, you know what? I'm going to try to make their job so much easier that they're going to like it when I come in and pitch. And that's basically try to get ahead of the hitters by throwing fastballs right down the middle of the plate. There's a fastball that catches the outside edge. Saunders is down on strikes, one down. The 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Roof is closed tonight at Rogers Center. And Aaron Loop strikes out the first man he faces here in the fifth. Kyle Seeger, we mentioned he had a big year on the road last year. 60 of his 85 RBIs were picked up on the road. And he picked up two big RBIs here tonight. A two-run home run off Ricky Romero. Seeger is an interesting guy. His teammates with Dustin Ackley. And they're obviously teammates here in Seattle. They were both at the University of North Carolina. Seager was a third round pick in 2009. Dustin Ackley was the first round pick, second pick overall in the same draft. So the two college teammates are now teammates here in Seattle. And Ackley, certainly as a first rounder, had much higher expectations than Seager. And Seager's, for the moment, turned out to be a little better hitter right now. Wardo, you think they ever tease each other about signing bonuses? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's <laughs> something in the dugout, in the clubhouse, and everywhere else on the bus, you know, to the hotel that they talk about that. And, you know, it's something that I think uh, is just something for two teammates in college coming here, playing on the same team in the big leagues, you know, to, to jeer each other with. Two and two, one out. Missed outside with a fastball. Yeah, you can bet that they have had that conversation before. You were number one, right? I was number three, so let's see. Let's try to figure it out. A couple of million here, four or five. Okay, yeah. you probably didn't get as much as I did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Full count one out. And Seeger stays alive. Dustin Ackley, we mentioned he had a very good rookie season. Hit 273 in 2011 and dropped off to 226 last year, and that's natural. They get to know you a little bit. Sophomore pressures trying to build on a good rookie season. Hot shot past Incarnacion into right. Kyle Sager's three for three. That right there was pretty close to the same pitch that he hit out of the ballpark off of Ricky. Fastball stayed on the inner half and up, and he turns on it and hits it sharply past Incarnacion. The only difference being that Ricky's was a slider that was just spinning. Yep. And that was a fastball right there. The DH is Kendris Morales. Continues to bat right-handed with Loop into the game, and 
tried to check and couldn't. Morales last year had his first full season since 2009. He injured himself in a celebration at home plate May 29th after hitting a walk-off grand slam. And you'll remember the video of the crowd waiting at home plate and he jumped in the air to land on home plate and landed awkwardly and broke his leg. Yeah, that's that's the one thing I remember when I think of Henry's Morales and ironically there was a lot of discussions amongst a lot of teams about that celebration and they let the guy hit the plate. They talked about no pylons anymore. I mean there was a lot of discussion throughout baseball. I guess there should be. Yeah. You got, you got money invested in a guy. Yeah. Well, let's not break his leg when he hits a home yeah. run. <laughs> yeah, we, want, we, want, we want him to play again tomorrow. <laughs> there goes the runner. Loop goes to first. The return throw in plenty of time. And Seeger went on the first move, and it was the wrong move. So he is caught stealing. One, three, four on the caught stealing. So Seager, although he got his third hit of the night, gets erased by Aaron Loop. And Morales strikes out. Quick turn of events here in the fifth. Blue Jays got to get something going against King Felix. Aaron Seabill will start things off, followed by Adam Lind and Colby Erasmus. Jays trail by three. Comfort Zone. Our fans have received a free seat upgrade tonight, courtesy of TD. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse, it's kids up front having a good time tonight and a great seed. And everybody's decked out in their blue Jays cap. So welcome to Rogers Center and the Jays Community Care Clubhouse. Aaron Sebia to start things off here in the fifth. And this is where you might see Hernandez make some adjustments. He's pitching in the fifth after throwing a lot of first pitch fastballs. He gets ahead with an off speed pitch. And I think that's, you know, that was probably his game plan from the start is go out there, get ahead, get ahead. And after, you know, the second or third time these guys come up on him, let's mix it up a little bit because they may come out swinging first pitch off me. But he still throws a strike. Another breaking ball, another strike. I mean, this guy's got the complete package. He's a good athlete. He's durable, never misses a turn, and he's got a wide assortment of pitches. That he can throw for strikes. He buries that change in. A lot of people think that's a split finger pitch, but it's a change up. He's got a lot of great movement. You get caught up in the radar gun readings, and it's 90 miles an hour, but it's a conventional change up. Well, he, he throws the circle change. 
and he's throwing it off his pinky finger and the other two middle fingers. But he has the same arm velocity with it. That's what makes change up a successful pitch. Goes off the glove of Montero. He throws the first in plenty of time to get Aaron Sebia. Fifth strikeout for King Felix. And he will give hitters a different look. And I think that's the true mark of a great starter is the ability to change your game plan as the game goes along. You can see that change of tumbling right there. That's a great example of it. Well, he tried to throw in the first one to JP. He, I think he tried to overthrow it, you know, make too too great of a pitch. That one there, he just went back to the same old Felix here. Let's just throw a good change up here. And he got uh, JP to, to, to chase after it. But he has changed that. He has gone back, you know, he went fastball, fastball, fastball the first three, four innings. Now he's starting everybody off with off speed stuff. Evelyn grounded out to second his first time up. Big hop for Ackley, and he'll go to first. Lind is grounded out a second time. Two quick outs for Hernandez here in the fifth. Felix Hernandez, I mentioned he's 27 years old. He just signed a nice little Jack Morris type contract. <laughs> Seven years, $175 million. That's not bad. Well, the numbers were a little different. The years were a little different. <laughs> Other than that, and the guarantee was a little different. Other than that, we're playing the same game. <laughs> <laughs> Two outs. But if you can't pay Felix Hernandez top dollar, then you shouldn't be in the business. He's durable. He takes the mound. He throws strikes. He helps you win ball games. He wins Cy Young awards. I would say, and he's young. Yes. There's a few guys that got the big contracts, but they're. There's a lot of doubt whether they'll fulfill the last two, three years of those long term deals. There's most people think that Felix will still be pitching in the big leagues when his last couple of years roll around. Bottom of the strike to Colby Erasmus. Felix Hernandez has the lowest ERA by an American League starter since 2009. 2.81. Last year he pitched his fourth consecutive season with 200 innings and 200 strikeouts. He came came into today's game with a 1.90, and he's only throwing almost five innings of shutout ball here tonight, so that'll lower again. I just like I like his pace that he goes out there and pitches at. It's just you know everything is just so methodical. The same pace, same pace, same pace. I mean, this is like all the great pitchers we've seen over the years. Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson, Mike Messina, Joy, Jack Morris. You guys worked quickly because you knew you had the upper hand. It's the guys that tow the rubber, grab the rosin bag. They're not really sure who's got the advantage. <laughs> well, they're hoping that guy in the bullpen's ready to go. Breaking ball, Rasmus swings over the top of it, and Montero will go to first. Couple of strikeouts in the fifth. We'll go to the sixth, and here comes the home hardware cleanup crew, brought to you by Natura. Home Hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
by Baseball Canada and Little League captain. Vancouver, British Columbia, June 25th, 26th, and 27th in that Bailey Stadium. That's the site of the Super Camp. Instructors include Roberto Alomar, Cecil Fielder, Homer Bush, Lloyd Mosby, Candy Marmorano, and Devon White. For more information, you can log on to BlueJays.com about Super Camps. And we are pleased to be joined tonight by Dwayne Ward. He's been with us all night. Of course, Jack and Buck here. Dwayne, you've been involved in the Super Camp since day one. And I know yes. you're not going to be at that Super Camp in that daily because nope. you're going to be. We are going to be. I'm going to be in Saskatoon at another camp there. So they're running sim uh, simultaneously. And so uh, I got Saskatoon. And there are also uh, a lot of hitters are going over there. But we have one coming up at the end of this month here in Waterloo Kitchener. So. I'm looking forward to it. I always look forward to them. I think it's a great thing for us to do as, a, as an organization. Turnouts have been great over the history of the Super Camps, and they're getting better. How many are you going to do overall this year? Uh, we're going to have uh, 17, 17 Super Camps this year, along with four Girls' Day camps and also uh, other camps thrown in there You know, when we have time. Michael Morris hits one to short. Kawasaki across the diamond in plenty of time. One down here in the sixth. The thing I like most about all those camps though, is I get a chance, you know, to get back with a bunch of the alumni guys, and you know, we get to tell stories based on what we're doing up here tonight, and just talking baseball and telling stories. And uh, it's like well, I've already told Jack he's doing one this summer, so uh, so I'm looking forward to that one there. Dwayne, this is serious business up here. I understand that. And I tell you, I'm enjoying it's it. Serious. <laughs> and, and I, there's a drive to right. Bautista will look up, and Jason Bay has just hit a home run. Jason Bay goes opposite field, his third home run of the season. An add-on run for the Mariners here in the six. It's now 4 nothing Seattle. Aaron Loop got off to a great start as far as keeping the ball in the ballpark, but that's the second home run he's allowed this season. Yeah, a little too much of the plate there. Jason Bay got the good part of the bat on the ball and it shot out to right. Well, that's a familiar pattern we've seen with the roof closed here at Rogers Center. The ball has been flying out for Bay. That's his third home run, and you can bet he is thrilled to be healthy again. He dealt with a lot of injury issues last year, including a fractured rib and a concussion. And he is back in the Northwest. Of course, he's from Trail BC. Played at Gonzaga in Oregon, and now he is with the Mariners. There's another base hit. Justin Smoke may have broken his back, but he'll end up with a single. Jason Bay with the home run, and he is on a very impressive list of slugging Canadians, all-time home runs, led by Larry Walker, of course, the former MVP, Matt Stairs, who spent some time here with the Blue Jays at 265, Jason Bay, 214, and Justin Morneau with the Twins, 206. The last two guys on that list probably would have considerably more, but they've had a lot of injuries to deal with, both Bay and Morneau. Dustin Ackley drove in the third Mariner run back in the fourth inning. He had an RBI single. Oops, ahead. Mention Ackley, the second overall pick. In the 2009 draft, he was taken by the Mariners, and Mariners have had some high draft picks because of their poor records during the regular season. But they've made the most of them. Actually, had a good year with the glove last year. He was in the top three in the final voting for the Gold Glove with Robinson Cano and Dustin Pedroia. He was the Mariners MVP in 2011, his rookie season. Breaking ball pulled through the right side. A pitch, he got that one up. Uh, 
It might have been one of those uh, things that Jack called uh, Ricky's on the, you know, that spinner where it just didn't do a whole lot when he, uh, when he threw it. Yep, it is. It's a breaking ball. It just, just spun there, and you can see it right there just hanging. Aaron Loop throws cross body. A lot of, the, a lot of what we're, they're trying to get Ricky Romero not to do, they're letting Aaron Loop do because of his arm angle and where he's coming in his release points, kind of almost off the mound. But what happens is when it flattens out, it stays up, and Aaron's really got to concentrate on keeping his hand on top of the ball when he throws his breaking ball, because if he doesn't and he gets it down, the ball stays flat, it stays up in the zone. Just stays on, it stays on that even plane right there. It doesn't get any kind of a breakdown downward toward the, you know, what do you say, the back foot of the right-handed batter. Right. Jesus Montero, the catcher. Drives this ball to right. Bautista, long run on the track. It is a catch by Bautista. Oh, what a catch. Great concentration. And Smoke has to hustle back to the slide to beat the throw second. Good job by Bautista. That ball was carrying a long way, and he never broke stride. Once he hit the warning track, he stretched his glove out and takes one away from Montero. I'm not sure he knew he was going to catch this ball, but he threw his glove up there, and he hit the wall all in one stride. Great concentration, like you said. Well, I think you're right, though. I think, you know, he almost said, I'm going to go after this thing here. I may not get it, but here, you know, I got a shot. He looked, he looked at the wall and then looked back and said, I got a shot at catching this ball. Played it perfectly. Brendan Ryan takes a strike. Mariners have added a run here in the sixth. They lead 4 0. They've had to hit the Blue Jays 7 to 2 and have hit a pair of home runs tonight. Kyle Seeger, a two run, a home run off Ricky Romero and Jason Bay. A solo shot here in the sixth. Bounce toward third. Laurie takes it and goes to second to end the inning. But the Mariners had another run. Blue Jays are down by four. Isturis, Kawasaki, and Lori will try to figure out King Felix. Presented by Boston Pizza. Saturday, May 4th, the Blue Jays take on the Seattle Mariners. The game starts at 107 p.m. Special kids price tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. It's always a great afternoon here on Junior Day Saturday. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com to order your tickets for Junior Day Saturday. You can always stop by most Rogers Plus locations and pick up the Blue Jays tickets. Phoenix Hernandez is working in the sixth inning on a two hit shutout. And Jackie made a great point. Back in the third inning with two outs, Kawasaki hit a comebacker and 
Hernandez got frustrated. He couldn't make an out on. Looked like he knew he had special stuff tonight. He's had special stuff all year and his last two starts have. Been that way he's just kind of. Continuing on with it here tonight. Most impressive thing. Six strikeouts no walks. Kawasaki hits the little chopper to second and actually throws him out. The 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. CN Tower right next door to Rogers Center. Of course, I said Kawasaki. That was the Stewart's leading off the inning. Now Kawasaki will step in the box with one out. Seattle leads it four nothing. Kawasaki has the infield hit. Melky Cabrera had a bloop hit, and that's been it for the Jays. Slaps this one to the hole. Brendan Ryan, what a wow. wizard! Boy, he can hit 140 and still be an asset for you. That's a base hit all the way. That right there, that was that was a nice play there. Just going deep in the hole. He knows he had no time at all to make that play, uh, to make that throw. So he did it on the run, jumped and threw the ball through a strike. Well, it's the power he generates after he gets rid of the ball, to have the arm strength to be able to throw that while he's in the air, and throw it high enough. A lot oh, of yeah. times they'll bounce the ball, and that takes. A little more time when it bounces, and you can tell, you know, how how much right there too. Just on a replay, how how excited Hernandez was about it. You know, guys making those plays behind him, and that makes your pitcher, you know, make you as a pitcher makes you want to go out there and perform and do better too. Ten ground ball outs for Hernandez, and here's another one. They've tried him before. He throws high and throws it away. He got a little pumped up after that jump throw to. <laughs> Throw out Kawasaki, reach back for a little extra, and makes his third error of the season. A much more routine play, and he airmailed Smoke at first. Maybe that was the problem. It's a little bit too routine for him. Uh, had had time to think about it. I think what he saw was Brett Laurie was hauling down the hauling down the first baseline. He kind of rushed his. Lower body like pitchers do sometimes. Dragged his arm. He thought it was routine and Brett wasn't thinking routine. He's going to make him make a play. Brett Laurie always gets out of the box and gives you a 100% effort. Okay, he's going hard there. I mean, he, he, he made this routine play not a routine play. Keeps the inning alive. Now Melky Cabrera will try to do the same thing. Ball on the strike. It's kind of sad that you have to point out that Brett Lorry is hustling down the line. That's the exception. <laughs> you do that all the time, and who knows how many errors you'll force the defense into. Ball on the strike, two outs. Ripped and gloved by Smoke. What a play. Well, the defense for the Mariners has responded behind Felix Hernandez. Justin Smoke, a very good play. He bounces to his right, comes back to his left, and snares a hot shot off the bat of Cabrera.
four RBIs. He's done a good job since signing as a free agent. Cleveland starter Justin Masterson, who's allowed three earned runs through five and two thirds. So the Indians are trying to get to 500 and are play tonight 12 and 13, and they've won four straight. New pitcher for the Blue Jays will be Ismail Rogers, his 15th appearance of the season. Aaron Loop goes two innings. He is charged with one run on four hits, an opposite field home run to Jason Bay. Now Rogers will try to keep the Mariners at bay. John Gibbons going two innings with Loop. Probably like to get a couple innings out of Rogers. Let the bullpen build a little, but not overuse them. R.A. Dickey throwing for the Blue Jays tomorrow, and I'm sure he's anxious to get back out there. He's had some momentum in a positive way his last two outings. The way that the relievers can pitch deeper in the game is be more efficient. R.A. Dickey talking with Brandon Morrow. Dickey will go tomorrow. Morrow will pitch on Sunday. That'll cut down your pitch count. Strike three will do it. One down. This got me right at telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. A couple of guys admiring their new purchases. One Team Canada jersey, one Blue Jays jersey. Kyle Seegers had a perfect night, average up over 300. Single, two run homer, and a single. Just, you know, this guy's just a little pesky hitter. You know, he's got a little bit of power, but, uh, you know, it looks like he has a good approach to what he's trying to do with the plate here. You know, he's not trying to do too much. Just taking what the pitcher gives him and, you know, push the ball in play. Figures just getting his feet on the ground in the big league. He's only 25 years old. The breaking ball strike. Figures' brother, Corey, was a first round pick of the Dodgers in 2012. Kind of runs in the family here. Bounce toward first. That's a fair ball. So Rogers gets Saunders and Seeger to start the seventh. Rogers seems to be better if he can start a clean inning. Well, he typically I'm does, and the one thing he can do is quick pitch guys. If they're in the batter's box. He can't do that with base runners on, but he does it occasionally with nobody on. Kendris Morales will bat left handed for the first time tonight. Morales faced Romero twice, was hit by a pitch in the fourth, and then struck out against Loop. There he hits one to center. Should be an easy play for Rasmus. He backpedals and makes the grab. Rodgers has a good inning. Shuts down the Mariners in an order. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. The big guns will face Fernand Hernandez when we come back. Bautista in Cardinal Schoen and Aaron Cedia.
Hockey Central Playoff Extra, 5 p.m. Eastern on the score. They'll tell you everything you know to get ready for that night's action. That's a great action. Hockey Central Playoff Extra on the score. Been some exciting games already and some controversy. Always great to get into the Stanley Cup playoffs. Leafs will be back on the ice against the Bruins in game two tomorrow. Jose Bautista has grounded out and hit into a double play. Felix Hernandez being very efficient tonight again. That was his 76 pitch. And it's the seventh inning. A little over 10 pitches an inning. Let me tell you something else he's done tonight. He's never thrown more than five balls in an inning. Five balls in the first, second, and third. He only threw three balls in the fourth, four balls in the fifth, and three in the sixth. He's thrown a lot of strikes. Just throwing strikes, and that's you know that's the key to pitching. I mean, to push the hitters on the defense, it gets you that advantage that you know you just go out there and go right at them and make them chase a pitch that you want them to hit or swing at. Jack, let me ask you this. You were a starter. When did you learn that you didn't have to make perfect pitches to get big league hitters out? The day that I realized I was never going to pass Nolan Ryan in strikeouts. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew you were a smart pitcher. <laughs> you know, there, there's something that triggers all pitchers. I think you go through your career and all of a sudden the light bulb goes on. You say, why didn't I really think of that before? Well, you had 28 guys telling you before, but you didn't listen to them. For me, I watched Jimmy Key, and I saw this guy pitch so efficiently that I, I just said to myself, this guy is not a blow away type guy. He pitched a lot like Mark Burley does. He commanded the ball down. He had a good breaking ball. He was able to spot his fastball and throw changeups. And yet he would go through games in two hours and 20 minutes and throw 86 to 90 pitches, complete games. And I said to myself, that is pitching. That is exactly what the word pitching means. And I've always loved Jimmy Key for that. Yeah, I remember when you came here and how you admired Key and his ability to control the ball game. Bautista with the leadoff single in Carnacion now. Takes one down and away. Edwin has popped up and struck out. Blue Jays have just three hits. Bautista is clearly the hardest hit ball tonight. Time to get something going against Hernandez. Yeah, this is the situation here. Just keep the line moving. Don't try to go, you know, to do too much at the plate. Let's get the guy behind him. Broken bat. Seeger. Ackley. Smoke. Another 5 4 3 double play. And. Hernandez gives up the leadoff single and quickly gets another ground ball. That's the second double play. He's got Bautista in the fourth and now in Carnacion in the seventh. Well, he just eats up another bat right there. That was the slider or curveball, whatever it is that he throws in his breaking ball, and it just stayed inside. Edwin hit it off the label of the bat. Bat, bat split in half. Gets a nice ground ball. 13 ground ball outs registered by Hernandez tonight. Just one out in the air. A pop up off the bat of Encarnacion. Well, that's just him keeping the ball down in the strike zone, getting ahead of the hitters. Aaron Sebia grounded out and struck out. We knew this was going to be a tough stretch on the schedule. John Lester, Clay Buckholtz, Ryan Dempster, now Hernandez, Iwakuma tomorrow, Saunders on Sunday. And then down to Tampa. And got a chance great to see young arms there. Matt Moore, David Price, Alex Cobb. Any of those pitchers, and they're on a roll right now. Matt Moore is really dealing. And then back to Boston. It's the big leagues. It's never going to be easy. And Sevilla called for the swing by Ed Hickox down at first, and 
Hernandez has a quick inning a ground ball double play and then a strikeout. debut with the Blue Jays tonight and it was a different Ricky Romero through the first three and then the fourth inning. First inning he was getting ahead down in the zone made a mistake right there to Kyle Seeger and he deposited into right field other than that he was dialed in and then the blister or whatever happened to his fingers led to a little erratic control. Well so I'm looking at Ricky tonight first three innings is the that's the only thing I'm going to look at for tomorrow or the next day or my next start. I'm not even going to look at that fourth inning because I want to build on what I did, get inning one, two, and three, and forget about the fourth inning and just move forward from here. Michael Morris goes after the first offering from Darren Oliver and hits a fly ball to left. He will be stopped there at first. Cabrera went over and gets it back in quickly. Oliver on his first pitch gives up a single to you. Morris had said it was a cutter telling his teammates that this is a cut fastball. Gets it right down around the label probably broke his mat but he well, gets a base hit. You see how he pulls his hands in there and tries to get the good part of the bat on the ball. He's a strong young man. And got just enough of the, the bat you know big part of the bat on that ball to hit it out there where he did. 2011 Michael Morris won the triple crown for the Nationals. He led the team in average home runs and RBIs. It's always good to have a guy on your team that can lead you in home runs, RBIs, and batting average. And it's a complete package. Yep. It took him a while to really develop, but he battled injuries early in his career and really blossomed playing for the Nationals. Jason Bay homered his last time up an opposite field home run his third of the season. Bay had injuries last year and he played in a career low 70 games. Bouncing ball this could be two. Kawasaki is stores back to Encarnacion it is a double play. Kawasaki has worked hard with Louis Rivera to improve his double play routine. Blue Jay defense starting to tighten up around second base, and that's a good sign. Pitchers need to rely on the ground ball. You watch Felix Hernandez, all the ground ball double plays he's gotten tonight. You need the defense, you need the ground ball. That's part of your weapon as a pitcher. And when you have those guys back there that can make the plays, turn the double plays. You're, you're more confident up there on the mound as a pitcher throwing the ball to. First baseman Justin Smoke. Average up to 245.
Hits this one into the air. Rasmus to center fielder. Has plenty of room. Dan Oliver just seven pitches and he is through the eighth inning. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Baseball. Listen to live audio, follow games, pitch by pitch, and enjoy in game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and Blackberry Z10. Season long subscription packages are available for $19.99. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. At Bat 13 is the official app of Major League Baseball. 23,779 on hand, and they have seen Phoenix. Hernandez dominate the Blue Jays. Three hits, no walks, and seven strikeouts through seven innings. We mentioned the Blue Jays have fared well against Hernandez in the past. Coming into this ball game, he has just a three and four record against them. And Lynn drives one to the gap. Long run for Morris. He's not going to get there. It's up against the wall, and Adam Lynn will coast into second with a leadoff double. Adam then getting the fastball and looking for it here out over the plate. Finally squaring up one and finding an alley. Lead off double. Maybe the Blue Jays can get something going here. Fourth double of the season for Adam Lynn. That's the way the Blue Jays start the eight. They're running out of time. We'll get some stirring in the. Seattle Mariner bullpen. Rasmus jumps on the first pitch and Lynn didn't get a good read off but it was a line drive. He wasn't sure if it was going to get down safely. Colby Rasmus had three hits last night and he drills a fastball in the right. Well there's I mean here's the situation here. I mean Hernandez has been doing nothing but throwing strikes all night long. I mean in the eighth inning here they find a sign that they're going to start swinging the bat first pitch or second pitch and jumping on him here. First and third, nobody out. Then with a double, Rasmus with a line single in the right. Meiser is Sturis. Rally caps have been out a lot here at Rogers Center this year. They need new ones. Let's see if we can get it to work. <laughs> Popped up near the seat. Seeger gives it a look, but it's out of play. And you're right. Why not be ready to swing if you're a stress? Yeah, I mean, no. The whole thing is, is that all night long, I think he's what he's started every every hitter off except for four of them. Twenty of twenty-six. Yeah, okay, six of them. First pitch strike, and and you know immediately you're in a hole, and then he's going to sit there and dictate how that at best going to go instead of you dictating it. You know, take it, take a chance to swing at the first pitch. Good off-speed pitch, and Hernandez. Quickly ahead, 0 2. 
This has been a problem for the Blue Jays all season long, hitting with runners in scoring position. Got to put the ball in play. Runners in scoring position, put the ball in play. As a team, they've hit 195. Isturis has one hit in 16 at bats with runners in scoring position. Got to battle Hernandez right here and get something going. Line to Seeger back to first. Rasmus is doubled up. It's oh. a third double play of the night turned by. The Seattle Mariners, and that's a killer. A line drive to the third baseman, and Rasmus took one too many steps towards second. I think that might be just a little bit of excitement here. You know, see, you know, back to back base hits, and everybody knows, you know, freeze on the line drive. I mean, Rasmus was still trying to check it and see, you know, if the ball's going to get through or not. Kyle Sager has started all three of the double plays. Two, five, four, three double plays, and they're the line drive double play. Boy, their defense has helped Felix out tonight. Not that he's needed much help, but. But when the ball's put in play, though, I mean, you need that defense behind you and make some plays, and, you know, something like that right there helps a the pitcher out tremendously. But, I mean, he's doing his job. He's getting the ground balls, he's getting the pop ups, and, and uh, you know, getting guys out. Seager ranges far to his left and makes a good play to end the inning. A very promising start ends up with nothing against Hernandez. is presented by TD in support of the Jays Care Foundation Wednesday, May 15th, when the Blue Jays take on the reigning world champion San Francisco Giants. The game starts at 7.07 p.m. and you can bid on exclusive Blue Jays experiences and one-of-a-kind memorabilia. The bidding starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time and closes 10 minutes after the final out of the seventh inning. Visit BlueJays.com slash broadcast auction for more details. The Giants are in town May 15th and 16th, and a new pitcher for the Blue Jays is Casey Jansen. John Gibbons getting Jansen in to give him a work, little work. One of the things that has been very hard is to get your best pitcher, Casey Jansen, in ball games. He last pitched on Tuesday when he had a 1 2 3 inning. Ninth inning, he sent down the Red Sox in order to pick up his seventh save. That was in the 9 7 Blue Jays win on Tuesday night against the Red Sox. Wardo, do you ever have issues coming in games like this where you had to get a little work in the Save situation wasn't there. It was just an inning that you needed to and work. Yes, the, I mean that's. I was gonna. I was gonna touch on that. That these are the tougher games to come into. You know, when you need to get work, you need to stay sharp. 
this is, you know, we used to call it a trick. This is when, the, you know, you had the tendency to give up, you know, two or three runs because you're that, you know, sometimes safe situation. It's not that hold situation. The adrenaline's just, not there. The adrenaline's not there. So you go out there and just say, I'm just going to get an innings work in here. But, you know, I, I'm looking at Jansen here, and, I, you know, he looks like he's ready to pitch and stuff and getting, you know, going at it hard. But, uh, you know, you have to do that as a, as a closer, as a setup guy. You have to get your work in to stay sharp so that when those safe situations, the whole safe situations come up, you're prepared for them. You just got to trick yourself into thinking yes. it's a yeah, it, it's, safe it's, situation. It, yep. it, it, this all matters. It's tough. I think it's actually to pop up into center field. Kobe Erasmus has to wait on it then. That's the first out in the inning. Prior to tonight's game, PlayStation provided us with a simulation of who they thought would be the Blue Jays player of the game. The video game version picked Colby Erasmus to have a big game. Well, they predicted a two for three now. He's actually got a one for three. A couple of strikeouts, and he singled to get the eighth inning started, but they couldn't do much with it. The predictor is brought to you by MLB 13 The Show, only on PS3 and Vita. Available in stores now. Jesus Montero, the catcher, was robbed of an extra base hit on a terrific defensive play in right by Bautista in the sixth. Hits this ball, and it's slicing away from Rasmus, but he closes ground and makes a good running catch. He got a good jump on that ball there. That ball was slicing away from him a little bit, and, you know, Colby can run a little bit, not, not too bad, but uh, made, the, made the play look easy. Ball off the bat of the right hander had a little slice to it, but he runs it down. Two down. Rogers and Oliver and now Jansen have pitched extremely well in relief. One inning at a time for the Blue Jays tonight. Brendan Ryan goes after the first pitch. Jansen is going to have a breeze if that ball comes down. It does, and Cabrera catches it. Just nine pitches for. Casey Jensen, top of the order for the Blue Jays, will bat in the ninth. Brett Laurie, Melky Cabrera, Jose Bautista. It'll be against the bullpen and Tom Wilhelmson when we come back. By the 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick, Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Kyle Seeger against Ricky Romero with a man aboard in the fourth. He gets the Mariners off and running. A two-run shot to the seats. His third, fourth home run of the season. RBI's number 14 and 15 for the third baseman who finished up with three hits on the night. He's played great at third base defensively. And now the Mariners have gotten to their bullpen, their closer, Tom Wilhelmson. Eight for eight so far. This is his 13th appearance of the season. Six foot six, Tom Wilhelmson's got a big arm. He'll throw in the upper 90s with a hard curveball. 
97 to start. That's not too bad right there. Hey Felix, go sit down. I'll take it in the ninth. That's what he's saying. Absolutely. But the thing I like, you know, about all the, you know, all the pitchers tonight, you know, I mean, even Ricky in the first three innings, everybody's out there going strike one, strike one, strike one. I mean, it's actually been a pretty well pitched game except for one inning. Ouch. You like you were right. You were, you were right about that curveball right there. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like a Dwayne Ward yeah. slider. I'm, I'm wondering how uh, how Brett laid off that thing. Look at I tell you what, looked pretty dang good. Brett Lori, 0 for 3 so far, breaks his bat. Seeger at third base has had a busy night. One down. Let's go back and look at the line for Felix Hernandez, the starter in this game, and he set the tone early. He retired, retired the first eight he faced. Most impressive thing on that whole stat right there: zero walks, seven strikeouts, only 95 pitches through eight innings. Yeah. No question, he could have finished this game. He is on cruise control all night long. But the way the game's played today, he gets to take it to the shower and. Watch his buddy clean up for him. Well, Helmson misses with the first pitch. You know, I have no problem taking him out of this game. It's four nothing. Well, Helmson's been eight for eight. Mm -hmm. You never know what kind of matchup Hernandez is going to have next time out. You might have to ask him to go 125, 130 pitches. So you figure you got this one in pretty good hands with Will Helmson, and just you know, here we are, at first start of May. And you know Hernandez is going to make 33 starts. Just yeah. give him a little night off. Well, Helmson's an interesting story. Eric Wedge gave him the opportunity to close late in June last year, and he took the ball and ran with it. Took over in June for Brandon League, who was struggling. And then after the All-Star break, Will Humpson saved 22 of 25 opportunities. That's taking an opportunity and making the most of it. Two and two. Curveball. Popped into right. The right fielder, Michael Morris, moves underneath it. Two down. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ken Reed, Navanka Osman. Blue Jays are down to their final out. Jose Bautista has gone one for three tonight. Bautista hit the hardest ball the Jays had hit tonight. Hit a line shot into left field in the seventh, a leadoff single. But he was erased by a double play ball. He takes another breaking ball to an 0. Wilhelmson was originally drafted and signed with the Milwaukee Brewers. Seventh round pick in 2002. Then he was suspended by the Brewers for violating the drug policy and was actually out of baseball for four years. Just totally out of baseball. And then got the itch back. Came back into baseball. 2009. Made his way to the big leagues. And now here he is as the Mariners close. Yeah, that, that's a heck of a story right there. And you can talk to hitters and they'll tell you this is some nasty stuff. 97 with movement and then that hard breaking ball. Yeah, hard one, yeah. Plus it's coming from a. Pretty big, pretty big man here. You know, the arm great, angle. Great, great angle on this. And you can tell, you know, he's just not giving in here. I mean, even though you know, they're up four nothing, he's still trying to, you know, not giving in, fighting his way back. Three-two count here. Foul back. 
Look at that pattern, down and away, down and away, and then you got to try to catch up the 97 in on your hands. On the inside, yeah, that's. Bautista takes a walk, Wilhelmson using the curveball, and Bautista gets aboard with two outs. Tell you what, I'm going to give Jim Joyce a lot of credit. The umpire, he could have called that strike three and not had too many complaints, but he stayed with it and did his job, and that's a tough call. He's been consistently yep. up in the zone, giving a little bit more up and not giving much at all down. So Bautista is going to go to second, but Encarnacion fouls it back. They weren't holding Bautista on. So he was going to take second. Wilhelm's not concerned one bit about Bautista. I don't think he's even looked over at him. So. <laughs> this is not a safe situation, so he's just trying to close this game out for Felix Hernandez. He's ahead of Encarnacion 0 2. Give up their first walk of the night. Very next batter. He comes back going strike one, strike two. I mean, immediately right back into the strike zone. Bautista not credited with a stolen base. It's defensive indifference. He's at second with two outs. Encarnacion in a hole 0 2. Right down Broadway. Wilhelmson punctuates a good night for the Mariners by striking out Encarnacion. Phoenix Hernandez was dominant. Kyle Seager gave him all he needed with a two run home run in the fourth. Seattle wins it 4 0. Hernandez improves to 4 and 2 on the season. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Stay tuned. Connected coming right up. Ken Reed and the Banca Osmond.